Did you know there are animals in the world who do not have hands or legs? I cannot imagine how will they do various body movements? How will they even move? I think you know which animal I am talking about. It's the snakes. So, have you seen a snake? I think you might have seen them on the TV or in the zoo. They look scary and they are poisonous too. Snakes are elongated, flexible, carnivorous, limbless reptiles. They can slither through the grass, crawl in the deserts or even swim underwater. Fascinating, isn't it? Hey, why don't we go to the woods, try finding out a snake and look at it in detail. Ooh, see there's a snake. Scary, isn't it? The slithery motion achieved by snakes are a combination of ribs, muscles and vertebrae. What are vertebrae? Well, they are the bones that make up the backbone. Snakes have an extremely long and flexible backbone running from head to tail. Their skeletal structure is made up of a huge number of ribs that connects with the muscles as well as the backbone. Now let us talk about how snakes move. Starting from the neck, a set of contraction and relaxation of the muscles create sideward thrusts. This generates a wavy motion pushing the snake forward. There is another structure without which the snake will be quite helpless while moving. These are the ventral scales located in the underside of the snake's body. They grip the surface of the ground and help the snake to move forward. Snakes are good climbers. They climb tall tree branches in search of prey. But if it wants to go to another tree, it will simply take a huge leap, fly mid-air and swiftly land onto the next tree. This mechanism, similar to flying, is called gliding. Such snakes are also called flying snakes. Amazing, isn't it? So what is the moral of the story? Even without limbs, some animals can successfully do various body movements. When I say an animal that lives its entire life underwater, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? A fish? Exactly. So how do fishes move in water? Let us learn more about it. Movement of a fish comprises three things. Moving forward, changing direction, braking or stopping and balancing. Fishes have a streamlined body which means that their head and tail are narrow and their middle portion is broad. This shape allows water to easily flow around the fish allowing them to move in water. Contraction of strong muscles present in the fish curve the front portion of the body to one side and tail portion swings to the opposite side. This action creates a thrust which pushes the fish forward. A set of such thrusts make the fish swim ahead in water. Fishes do not have limbs, instead they have fins. The function of the fins is to maintain balance and provide direction during swimming. The pectoral fins located on each side are used to steer, change direction and act as a brake to stop or slow down movement. Pelvic fins located ventrally provide balance and keep the fish steady in water. The dorsal fin located on the back stabilizes the fish and protects it against rolling movements. The anal fin located ventrally also helps the fish to stabilize itself during swimming. The caudal or tail fin acts as the organ for propulsion pushing the fish forward in water. So fishes and other animals that live underwater face a lot of difficulties to survive in their unique environment. But they do not give up. Instead, they have developed some specialized features that help them to successfully lead an aquatic life. So that is all about how a fish... Hey! The, the bird just took away the fish. Oh! 
So it seems like some birds do eat fish. And talking about birds, do you want to know the secret behind how they fly? Let us find out. Why can't you fly but a bird can? Birds can fly high in the sky, walk on the ground or even swim in water. If you observe a bird during flight, you will see that they flap their beautiful wings and soar high up in the sky. Try flapping your hands. Does that lift you up? No, right? No matter how hard you try, you will still be on the ground. So imagine the amount of strength birds require to fly, glide or soar. So let us find out how they do it. In birds, the forelimbs are modified into wings. So unlike humans who have hands, birds have wings. The wings are made up of feathers and are attached to the breast muscles. The strong breast muscles help birds to flap their wings and give them the thrust to move through air. But you know what? Even if we have wings and such strong muscles, we still won't be able to fly. Why? Because the sky is so high. It is not like that. It is because we are heavy. Birds are able to fly because they have light bodies. The skeletal system is made up of thin, light and hollow bones, which reduces their body weight and helps them to fly easily. Like fishes, birds also have a streamlined body, which helps them to easily move through air. The tail helps them to change direction while flying. Powerful hind legs help them to walk or run on the ground. Birds like ducks and swans have webbed toes that act like fins and help them to swim in water. So now we know how birds can fly, walk or swim. Their flying mechanism led to the discovery of airplanes. Wow! We learnt a lot of interesting things about vertebrates. So before we call it a day, let us quickly take a recap of what we learned so far. The slithery motion achieved by snakes is a result of contraction and relaxation of muscles along with ribs and vertebrae. Contraction of muscles creates thrust which helps fish to move in water. The different types of fins provide balance and provide direction to the fish. Birds fly with the help of wings and powerful hind limbs helps them to run and walk. 